phantom image. Now you might be wondering why I'm lying down here on the rug. Well, it's because the other night, Claire and I did exactly this for the meteorite shower. We do it most years where in August you always get a great meteorite shower and, it, and we, you look for shooting stars. And what always happens is that Claire sees the shooting star and I blink and miss it. And the other night this happened about three or four times. I was out here about 20 minutes seeing nothing. Claire's seen about three not being able to see, but persistence paid off. I sought the shooting star and I found one. I found more than one. It was, it was brilliant. Seek and you shall find. That's what Jesus says today. Sometimes it takes a bit of perseverance. Sometimes we see other people seeking and finding and we wish we could find. Well, today, let Jesus inspire you to seek God and to find him here today. Let's start our service with a prayer. I'll just go and do it in the church though because it's a bit weird to be doing it lying down. Let's go. Let's pray. Faithful one whose word is life, come with saving power to free our praise inspire our prayer and to shape our lives for the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Life is full of uncertainties, but today Jesus can bring certainty to your life because he says when you seek, you will find.
Today's reading is from um, the Bible. Uh, one sec. No. 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 Got it. Uh, okay, so today's reading is on seek and you will find. Seek and you will find. Uh, it's from uh, the Bible, uh, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7, from verse 7 to 11. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open. For everyone who asks, receives. The one who seeks, finds. And the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which one of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children how much more will your father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him this is the word of the lord thanks be to god in our passage today there is a progression of intimacy with god on offer by jesus ask receive seek find knock and the door will be open to you when you ask you can ask a stranger from a distance when you seek you can find a friend from a distance but when you knock and the door is opened that is a personal close homely relationship there is a progression of intimacy with God on offer by prayer through what Jesus says. Let's look at it in turn. Let's think about asking and then receiving. Asking can happen without really knowing the person you're talking to. Hello, yes, yes, I'd like an extra large pizza, extra pepperoni, extra cheese, Oh, and you know those bites around the side? I love the bites around the side. The bites around the side, and uh, oh, gotta have some chicken. Chicken wings, chicken strips, and uh, wedges, yes. Big bottle of Coke, that'll be great. Family, do you want anything? You can talk on the telephone with someone who you don't know. Prayer often starts for people in a moment of a crisis, something terrible happens, and they just instinctively, or naturally, pray to God. I think almost everyone does that. But there's a sense in which they pray to God they don't really know. And yet God is God. He is loving. He is merciful. He loves to hear our prayers. If you ask him, you will receive, says Jesus. Jesus has said a number of times in the Sermon on the Mountain, we've looked at it already, where God will provide for our needs. That's what Jesus says. He provides for us now in the food that we eat, the clothes that we wear and things like that. But ultimately, he provides for us, even in death, a heavenly kingdom to come. And that is his ultimate provision. At the end of the day, that is our deepest longing and asking of God, isn't it? That he would save us from even death itself. So when we ask, we will receive. Not always in the same way that we think we're going to re receive. But God will give us what we need. And it's all found in Jesus and what he's done for us by his cross and resurrection. Healing, ultimately found in Jesus even found in death. Provision found in Jesus ultimately as provides salvation and a home in heaven. But prayer can go deeper than that, deeper than just asking 
and receiving. And Jesus wants to lead us into that deeper relationship with God today. Because today, you can seek and find. There is this progression. Now, when we're seeking, we don't just ask from afar, like on a telephone call, we don't really know them. We're seeking to know someone. We can seek and find God, knowing him for who he is. But the truth is that we can get to know the God in a number of ways. We can get to know who he is when we seek him. We can get to know what he is like. We can get to know what he wants, what his will is for us. And in that way, prayer goes deeper because it goes more than our needs but goes to our relationship with God himself. What does the Lord's Prayer start? Our Father, relationship in heaven. Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done. And it's that seeking of God, who he is, what his will is for us. And when we do that, Jesus promises us that we will find him. God can be found. We can know him personally. We, he doesn't need to be aloof or afar. You can get to know him. Not just asking, but seeking God. We're going to have a moment of confession because sometimes it is that we have not sought God as we wanted to. Maybe we have just, at the moment, just been asking for our needs and not really seeking God himself. Well, this is an opportunity to come back to God, repenting of the things we've done in the past and looking to just re-establish that, that good fatherly relationship that we can have with our heavenly God. The grace of God has dawned across the world with healing for all. So let us come to him in sorrow for our sins, seeking that healing and salvation from him. God of mercy, we acknowledge that we are all sinners. We turn from the wrong that we have thought and said and done and are mindful of all that we have failed to do. For the sake of Jesus, who died for us, forgive us for all that is past and help us to live each day in the light of Christ our Lord. Amen. May the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins and assure us of his eternal love in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Ask and receive all blessings through Jesus Christ for this life, but also for the next. Seek, find and have a relationship with the living, knowable Father God. But now Jesus is going to take us even deeper, deeper into prayer, deeper into that relationship with God, because we can not. It's one thing to ask someone. It's another thing to seek them out and to get to know them. It's another thing to go to their house. When you go to God and knock on his door, he will open it to you. And this applies now. If you knock on the door to God in prayer, his home becomes your home. I don't know whether you have any uh, really close friends where you're so comfortable just going around their house. Maybe you just let yourself in, I don't know. Maybe, you know, you need a drink. You, you just open the fridge and pull yourself out one. I mean, when you have that sort of a relationship with a friend, it is a wonderful thing. It's, it's like my home is your home. It's wonderful to, to share that in, in that way. Imagine that closeness in a relationship with God where he shares all he has with you in his son Jesus and you share all your, you have with him, with your body and soul and possessions, sharing each other. Right now you can be at home with God by his Holy Spirit. His Holy Spirit is his Spirit with us and in us. You can have that intimacy with God and it is to knock on that door. To go and be at home with God in your life. And you can enjoy that now. But you can enjoy that later. As with certainty, when you are before the gates of heaven itself. When you knock, God will fling open those gates of heaven for you. You will be welcomed into God's holiest place, around the Lamb of God, Jesus himself, gathered. You are welcome in God's place. You see that progression? Ask, receive, seek, find, knock, and the door is open to have your home with God forever. And who is this for? Who's this for? Who's it apply to? Well, verse 8, everyone who asks, receive. Everyone can seek and find. Everyone can knock and God's door will be open to you. Everyone. But Jesus doesn't just leave it there. He wants to prove that this is true. That God will indeed do this. How do you know? Well, look at the dads of this world. None of them perfect. Some of them awful. And yet Jesus says, even dads who aren't perfect know how to give good things to their children. They don't give a stone rather than bread. How much more, how much more will the perfect, good, 
righteous, heavenly Father God give to those who ask him? If we can give good things to our own children and we're not perfect, how much more is the perfect one in heaven going to do that? If God exists and is perfect, this must be true. It has to be true if he's perfect, that he will give his children what they need. That they can receive, they can find, and they can have a home with him. Go deeper in prayer and relationship with God today. It is for everyone. No matter who you are, you can have that intimate relationship with your Heavenly Father in Heaven. May He welcome you in today. Let's pray. Father God, we recognise you as Father the perfect Father, we praise you for who you are in your glory and majesty, and yet, and yet, you care for little old us on this little speck of this world in in the vastness of the universe. You care for each one of us. Father, we thank you that we can pray to you and you will listen. But we praise you that we can go deeper with you and you don't just seek to be a far off God, but you are the closest God. By your Holy Spirit, come on each one of us now that we might have a home with you now and the certainty of a home with you later. May we knock on your door knowing that you will certainly open it to us. We have a home with you now and a home with you in heaven. Encourage us, Lord, in this truth, our perfect heavenly Father. Amen. So let us pray. Father, we thank you and praise you for this new day and new start and a new beginning in our lives. We especially pray this day for the world that you've created, and especially with all the problems and the difficulties and the struggles that people are having with COVID-19. We especially ask that the church may be a light in the darkness, and that you will empower the church to share the gospel and to share your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we thank you and praise you for the way that you have loved and cared for each one of us. We especially pray for those whom we know who are struggling, finding lockdown difficult. Lord, that you be very near to them and close to them. And in the midst of their difficulties, Lord, we ask you to give them peace and to release the joy of the Holy Spirit in their lives. Father, we think of all those who are sick at this time, all those who are feeling lonely, all those who are struggling with health. Lord, we ask you to touch them by your spirit. Bring healing and wholeness to their mind, body and spirit. Let's just take a few moments in quietness, to pray in our hearts for those who we know who are sick, feeling lonely, just struggling in life. Mm. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we thank you and praise you for the way that you've caused the church to help people in this country. And we bring this nation before you today, and we especially ask for wisdom upon the leaders that run this country. We ask that you will show them the right way, and especially for those Christians in in Parliament, Lord God, we ask that you give them the boldness and the courage to speak our truth, give them wisdom, discernment, And please, Lord, we ask for peace and healing in this nation. We especially pray, Lord, where there seems to be so much anger and rebellion. Lord, you will show all people the right path and the right thing to do. We pray as a church in this nation, we will especially be able to help those who are struggling with depression and all kinds of financial difficulties. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we thank you and praise you that you have brought us out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. And we pray and ask that you will help us to deepen our relationship with you and know what it really means to believe in you. We also ask you to help us to be discerning and alert and aware to all the false prophets and all the false teaching around. Give us the wisdom we need to know the truth. We thank and praise you, Jesus, that you are the way, the truth and the life. And we ask that For those of us who may be really struggling at this time, maybe feeling low and downcast and in lockdown, we pray that you give each one of us strength to keep going and not to give up. We especially pray for those in churches around this country the leaders, that you will help them to make the right kind of decisions. We pray for the church here at Front and Erich. You will strengthen your church, strengthen all those who make decisions And we ask for your blessing and healing upon all families. Father, give us strength. Give us all that we need to persevere and to endure. Lord, we commit all these prayers, our thoughts, our heart desires, before your throne of grace and ask you in your mercy, hear our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. to
Thank you for joining us for our online service here at Fountain Heritage. It's been wonderful that you can join us here online for this, our main service. Let's pray as we finish today. The love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst us and remain with us always. Amen.